Hi, I'm Joe. I'm Cece. This is our Dog Summit. And this is our tiny house afloat, Mischief, on the beautiful Sagamore Creek in Portsmouth, New Hampshire. We've been together now for five years. Yeah, and then we've been married. It'll be three in August. And the whole idea of living tiny, I think we kind of both suggested hints at each other and it just kind of naturally flowed where we both wanted that out of life, I guess. And we had full drawings of what of building a tiny house. We were yeah. completely prepared. There is this one online that we had found for inspiration. It's kind of funny because I remember we had been walking over the there's a marina over by Kittery that we were walking by and there was a for sale sign on one of the houseboats over there. And I think you found it on Craigslist mm -hmm. and we kind of looked at each other and we're like, oh, that's a tiny house because you know, this area, there's no spare land. So there's nowhere to put a tiny house. Then literally two weeks later found this one also on Craigslist and we bought it two weeks after that, I think. Yeah. And so the tiny house thing had always been kind of a huge goal for us. The boat just happened to work out better. Living tiny and in this space and being on the boat, I think has really made us spend and focus time on being outside, which was one of our goals that we wanted to do a lot more adventuring. And we thought living in a small space would inconvenience us being home. So it would drive us to be away. And now it's just, we love being here, but we also are are able to get outside more too. And we save so much money living here, they were able to go on more adventures and cool ski trips and um, do more traveling that we want to do. Miss Chiff is a 1972 River Queen houseboat. That style of boat was originally popular to go along the Mississippi River. We've got a uh, Something folks probably don't think about much is the snow shovels and having to have the snow shovels and shoveling the boat off in the winter and the dock and keeping it clean. Um, the black tube here is a fresh water inlet for our outdoor shower that we use all summer long and it's absolutely wonderful here. Come aboard. We don't have a shower indoors, so this is the outdoor shower. Uh, we used to just have cold water, but we got a hot water heater, so we're able to shower all summer in our bathing suits. And then we have a upstairs deck. We have some furniture. Uh, it's a great reading area, great to hang out with friends, have a beer up here and look at our million dollar view. And in the summertime, there's around 75 boats or slips that are here of all various different sizes, all very fun to look at. Welcome. When you walk in, you come right into the kitchen and the home office. The kitchen, we were really lucky that the stove came with the boat. Tiny stoves are hard to find, and we we're lucky that it has both the cooktop and the oven. We have to use this for water during the winter, so it uh, just has like the spigot instead. Um, we keep it tipped up in case it gets cold in here, and then we have running water during the summer. Uh, and that also we have Joe's home office. I work from home. It's my working station and also the helm of the, the existing boat. And underneath here is all the switches and uh, that you would use to run the boat. And the, this is the actual steering wheel. The floors come from a house from the 1700s that a gentleman was renovating his home. And so he had put them on Facebook Marketplace and we purchased them. And, it was about, I think, 400 square feet of total flooring that we were able to buy off them. And we've used 200 square feet of it. And then we actually used the other pieces for the countertops here, my desk, the countertop down there, uh, and different pieces in here that we were able to repurpose the floor and use it, the space, instead of uh, buying brand new wood. We use this area as like a pantry. We keep all of our the pantry goods and such in there. Um, this little manhole area is, you can lift this up and underneath there we keep uh, our holding tanks for water or down there for fresh water if we, we can use it and we fill it up and use it for as long as we can but then uh, it runs out pretty quickly. 
when we bought the boat, we paid 8,500 for it. And then there was a $2,000 to truck it down to her folks place to do the renovations. And then I think we spent maybe another 10 grand in total for renovations 10 at to most. 15 probably. Yeah. I'd say, yeah, between 20 and 25,000 in total spend for it. We've been on it for this very fourth winter. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we knew finding a spot was going to be hard. For living on the seacoast, there are not that many marinas, and the marinas there are are full. And so calling all these places, we would either hear, we have a 10-year wait list, we would hear houseboats are trashy, yeah. you can't live here with one, or people were just not willing to take on somebody else who wanted to be there during the winter. A lot of marinas don't have any electric during the winter. And so that following summer came around and the boat was done. We were like stoked about it, but we couldn't find a spot to put it. And so then we kept calling and I found the marina here and I called and it was just serendipitous, I guess, because the owner wanted liverboards for a long time. For slip fees and the like total cost of ownership of living here, we pay in like six month increments, right? So it's six month summer, six month winter. So the six month summer season, we pay, I believe it's $150 per foot of the boat. So the boat's 37 feet long, so 150, whatever the math is there. Um, 5,500. 5,500. And then in the winter, 37 by 75 or so, I believe. Yeah, which so. is 2750, 20. maybe? <laughs> I think something I like think that. I think that's what we pay in the winter. Um, and that includes all utilities, includes water, electric, um, and internet too, actually. Um, where the marina owner put in really high-speed internet for us to be able to work from home. Um, so it was very, very awesome. <laughs> and then we can make our way into the living room. When we were designing the boat, we had to make sure that we were really designing things for that we would use for 80% of the time and keep anything that we probably would do 20% of the time and try to eliminate that as much as possible. One thing that we talked about was like the bed and like, yes, you do sleep on that a lot, but to have something that's just taking up that much space would be a pain in the butt. We were able to find the dimensions to put a Murphy bed down sideways. This table actually also, speaking of uh, thrifted items, a fisherman along the creek gave us this table out of one of his boats. So it pushes down and then... Pulled out these carriage bolts and then it all just rests on top of those. Right here. Over here, there's a little bit of extra space so we can keep the pillows and blankets under here. The TV's recessed so we can lay in bed and watch TV from the comfort of our bed. <laughs> we make the bed every morning and night. And then we just goes back up every morning. And the store's back. And one of our friends actually painted this for us. We wanted to have something interesting going on there. We had a hard time figuring what to, out what to do with that blank space, especially since it gets rested on the benches. These benches, we planned that both they would support the Murphy bed when the bed's down, and then obviously it's great storage space. So this one's Joe's. He's got all of his t-shirts in here. And then I've got the other bench and I've got uh, spare shoes in mine. Over here, we had a hard time figuring out what to do with the space because it's not that deep. I think we're pretty happy with it now. We've got like the bins for all of our clothing storage and then somebody local actually gave us a used lobster trap. So it's even still got the rope in there from when it was used for lobster and we've turned it into a bookshelf so we could keep some important stuff to us over here. One thing that um, Cece and I went back and forth on a lot was the size of a fridge. I was really pushing for a like college style beer fridge, mini fridge and uh, CC was like, that's like a non-negotiable to me. I want a full-size fridge. And so, like so we settled on an apartment size one. It's 10 cubic, um, so it was a storage capacity. It fits everything we need and we're a week's worth of groceries for us has been, been great. So we've got this door here 
that was already on the boat um, when we bought it and it had the characteristics of you know what a boat would look like with the porthole here and the mahogany wood we used it as a main entrance for a bit but then decided we did like the sliding doors better um, so we've just left it here as another point of exit just in case uh, as well as when we're sitting here and reading it is just a spectacular view to look out at the marina at and have it be eye level with yourself Back here, we've got this couch area. We've had a hard time figuring out what to do back here as well. When we first moved in, we had a five foot tall closet space, and then we switched it to kind of a day bed with the crate underneath, and now we've switched it to this couch-esque space for reading, hanging out, having a little bit of separation in the boat. We've got some storage under here and storage over here and then the dog crate down here. Uh, it looks like a tiny little cell for him but what we've done is the floor is cut out over here and the dog crate actually goes into the hull. Um, it's great for a couple reasons. Some it's fluffy, so I think it'll be really great this summer when it gets warm out. He'll be actually kind of sitting with the bottom um, down in the hall where it touches the water. And he also just really likes small spaces. We've found a couple different times in his life where he's really seeking out small spaces. And so it's like bigger underneath than you can see. It's just the entrance is small and it's really cozy for him. And then back here we have the closet slash bathroom. The shell is like a fiberglass shell from when the boat originally had a shower space in here. Since we don't have running water during the winter, we repurposed it with the uh, closet on the right and then we utilized the Nature's Head composting toilet. We're lucky at the marina as well because there is a restroom in the warehouse we can use as well. I'm happy we've been able to utilize this space for the closet. The job I have now, I have to wear business clothes every day. And so being able to have enough storage for business clothes every day and play clothes was important. And so the closet has two rows and an upper and lower level all filled up with hangers. We wanted to be reminded about the progress and the progression of the boat when we were renovating it in Vermont, the local paper came. But you can see over here, like it was carpeted. This is one of those RV tables that where the table drops down to a bed. The helm, you can see, you can see that we still have the uh, wheel. We changed up the kitchen quite a bit, but over here you can see we had the boat up on stilts and this is where all the renovating was being done. I'm happy we're at the marina because in the summer there's like 75 boats. No one else lives here, but it's always, there's always people. There's a lot going on with the people whose boats are here all the time. There's a boat launch, there's a kayak rental business. It's super fun, but I also like having six months where no one's here, nine months where no one's here. Yeah, yeah I mean, we have a multi million dollar view here and space that we pay less than 10 grand a year for yeah. right so we're very happy about it when we moved onto the boat the original plan was three to five years and that was three and a half years ago and I think the plan is still three and a half or three to five more years <laughs> it's just it's very hard to envision not living here every day on the boat I love so much I love living here it's beautiful I love coming home and you're just here and everything's just right here. It's so cozy, it's so comforting when I get home in the afternoon that when we have conversations about long terms, it's like, well, yeah, I mean space, but the boat is so great. Yeah. And so it can be hard to even envision not living here, even with those other goals that we have in mind, like kids. watching our video and for stopping by Tiny House Expedition. I'm Alexis. And I'm Christian. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And for more tiny home tours and stories, click the videos below. And join us on Instagram for bonus content. Including face-to-face -face conversations with us. <laughs> we hope to see you there. All right. Thanks, guys. Have a good one.